Godspeed. Let us press on. ahead. Our path leads on.
I will guide us. Our time has come. Yes. Oxy. Yes.
Commander, I am satisfied with the troop review, but I do not expect they will be sufficient for the task. You will have to prove yourself a shrewd leader and hire the necessary troops with the provided funds. I have chosen a target for your campaign, and that target is Dresden, our lost outpost within the world wound. The Sword of Valor was kept there, a banner that was once carried by Iomede herself. Our greatest relic was lost when the city fell. I should make one thing clear from the start. The Sword of Valor is no mere symbol, but a powerful weapon against demons. The holiness of the banner weakens them, and robs them of one of their most dangerous abilities, teleportation. A forced march to Dresden awaits you. The Sword of Valor is kept somewhere within the Citadel. The demons probably think it's a hunting trophy. Its recovery is just as important as retaking the city itself. I hope the task is clear. I'm sending two specialists to help you, along with the soldiers. A historian, Nura Dendewar, and a cleric, Sozial Vainik. One of the famous inquisitors of the Church of Iomade also wants to talk to you. The Honorable Leota, whom everyone calls Hawkblade. I do not wish to keep you, Commander. The matter I must discuss with you is extremely important. But it is not directly related to the Crusade. You no doubt wish to meet your new comrades and speak with Her Majesty. Therefore, I shall leave you now. But I ask that you seek me out in the camp at your earliest convenience. Hi! Listen, it's amazing here! It's like I'm in a ballad! There's knights in shining armor, deadly dangers, glorious feats! We are going to show those demons! I'm so tired of sitting in a library reading books about history. It's time I took part in it! <laughs> I'm glad to help our cause, Commander. If you have some time later, I'd like to speak with you further. You'll have plenty of time to talk. You're the Knight Commander's people now, his trusted advisors and companions. Now then, will you please leave us? Erebus, you can go too. Some actions may be deemed bold, or even extreme, and beyond those, there are some you might call the Queen's last resort. I am not a simple monarch. I am at war with the Abyss, a war which has lasted over a hundred years. I cannot allow myself the luxury of caution. In you, I see a chance, and I am willing to stake everything on it. However, you cannot blame me for putting you in charge of the Crusade. I only formalized what had already happened in the hearts and minds of many. 
People spoke of the power that descended upon you and helped you save the Wardstones from corruption and total destruction. Word of this feat quickly spread far beyond the borders of Mendev. There was no other person who could better fit the role of Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. Of course, I shall answer. That's a good question. Its walls were built by dwarf craftsmen, and the power of the Sword of Valor protected the city. Alas, where raging hordes failed, a single lying tongue was all they needed to succeed. The demoness Minago convinced a young and ambitious crusader named Staunton Vane that the banner belonged on the battlefield. He went on a daring and unapproved raid, and the banner ended up in the enemy's hands. The city fell soon after. Ever since then, for seven decades, it has served as a citadel for the forces of the Abyss. Oh, really? I wasn't informed of this. After Dresden fell because of Staunton, he was nearly sentenced to death. He deserved it. In wartime, men are hanged for far less. But you have no idea what a terrible sight it is. A raging crowd of crusaders baying for blood. Never have my fighters looked so much like the demons we are fighting. I commuted Staunton's sentence and stripped him of his rank. Not just for him, but for my army and my country. We are not Hell Knights. We do not maintain discipline with public executions. Perhaps exile would have been a more merciful sentence than decades of service among those who despised him. I was hoping he might atone for his guilt with a heroic act, but he likely decided that atonement was impossible, and he might as well give himself over to evil. Everyone we saw today at the parade, first among them the Eagle Watch, who remain a powerful force thanks to Erebeth's resourcefulness. Also marching with you are several minor knightly orders, as the minor volunteer units like to be called. And finally, I have personally selected some recruits from Nerosian. They have little in the way of battle experience, but great determination and a thirst to prove themselves. I've always thought that an army benefits from at least one such unit. These forces, as I said, are not enough for a march on Dresden. You will have to hire additional troops with the funds that have been provided to you. But for a brave commander, and I hope you are one, that is just the beginning. If you retake Dresden, recover the holy power of the Sword of Valor, and gain a foothold in the region, then new armies will join under your banner. The Fifth Crusade is only beginning. Many battles and victories lie ahead. We have a chance now that we haven't seen in decades. But it's more than that. You created this chance for us by foiling the demon's plans in Canabris. The army who attacked the city came straight from Dresden. Demon hordes from the Abyss are usually encamped there, but many of them perished on the streets of Canabris. We must attack swiftly before they can restore their forces. When the city is free and the Sword of Valor appears before our soldiers, they won't be sending in any more reinforcements. Demons cannot teleport into an area protected by the Banner of the Goddess. Now you are talking like a real Knight Commander. However, answering your question is not easy. To win this war, we must bar the demons' way. There are a few planar rifts leading to the Abyss across the territory we call the World Wound. The best specialists we could find have tried to close them on separate occasions, with no success, as you may have guessed. The World Wound is more than just a chain of portals to the Abyss. We do not understand its nature yet. The methods of rift closure known to magical science simply do not work here. However, we have a hypothesis, and a rather well-grounded one, that we must begin at the source of the problem. 
the place where the world wound was opened. The main rift lies through the city of Iz and the Threshold Fortress, deep in the former lands of Socorus. We have never managed to fight our way so far and gain a foothold to allow the mages to explore the origins of the world wound. So, the next step, after you succeed in Dresden, is an offensive push deeper into the world wound, with the aim of reaching Threshold. The very threshold of the Abyss. Wonderful. I had guessed as much. Many angels fought alongside us in the First Crusade. Heaven was unable to mobilize its full might to aid us, but individual Celestials volunteered to fight for our cause. Then one day, they all vanished, saying that they were setting off on an important mission. Not long after, Iomedes' Herald erected the first Wardstone in Kenobris, and then the others in cities across Mendev. Even back then, I had nagging doubts. But my faith in Iomade easily assuaged them. It is for us to serve the goddess, after all, not to question her works. In any case, I am glad you did not allow the demons to commit sacrilege and gain control over the Wardstone in Kenobris. We might have lost one of the Wardstones, but the chain is still standing. Lariel. I knew him. He disappeared shortly before the world wound grew, and Dresden fell into the enemy's hands. In the chaos, we had more important concerns than investigating the fate of a single angel. Even one so righteous and beloved as Lariel. And afterward, matters took a turn for the worse. The angels left us to go on their special mission. It is so strange to hear the names I used to hear when I was young. Like, getting a message from the past. It is sad news, but it brings me back to the times when we strongly believed in our victory, and we rushed headlong toward it without fear. Could it be that such times have come again? Overlooking a spot of insubordination just at the moment. However, I shall answer you. I shall prepare the defenses at Nerosian and all the other border cities and plan the future of the Fifth Crusade. Does that satisfy your curiosity, Knight Commander? attempt to appeal to the conscience of an old sovereign? I don't know if you realize what you're suggesting. If our enemies in the depths of the wound were to discover that I was with your army, they would immediately send their most vicious demons to attack. They would stop at nothing to be rid of me, and thereby sow chaos across Mendev. But you are right. I shouldn't be sitting it out in the rear. I am a warrior queen, and a queen of warriors. Yet my fighters have forgotten what I look like. Fine. I shall join the Crusade, but on my own terms. First, I shall assemble my entourage and lead the parade out of the camp. I shall catch up with you later, along with a few hand-picked bodyguards. We'll change our armor, and I'll become a knight of a minor order and join the troops incognito. Until we approach Dresden, no one should know I am among you. But before we storm the city, I shall show myself to the troops and join the battle. Let it be a surprise for the demons. I hope you won't complain of my company on the road, Commander, since you were the one who insisted upon it. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? Splendid. Ah, oh, yes. We have one final matter to attend to. It should be rather enjoyable. Count, there you are. You received my instruction? I did, though I did not have time to read the thing before I was dragged before your majesty. In truth, I was readying myself to depart. No matter. I trust you will forgive your sovereign for the rather brusque summons, especially when you learn what prompted it. As you are aware, he has recently been appointed my Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. 
I spent a long while pondering whom to appoint to the highly sensitive post of Commander's Field Attaché and Advisor Plenipotentiary without portfolio. Congratulations, Count. It is a great honor, I suppose. I knew you would approve, Commander. I had my doubts about whether you were ready for such a responsibility, Count. But your conduct in Kenobris has put my mind at ease. So, you will travel with the troops to Dresden. Only the Commander may remove you from your post. But I trust that you will dutifully fulfill his orders and make a good showing of yourself. Especially since word of your appointment, Count, will reach the court at any moment. All of Mendev's nobility will be following your successes in service to the nation, including all of your devoted admirers. I even heard that one bard with whom you are particularly friendly has already begun composing a ballad to honor your heroic participation in the Crusade and your faithful service to the commander here. Your largesse truly knows no bounds, dear cousin. I am most, most gratified by the honor you have shown me. Then let's get going. Me